Hi guys, Jared here, and today I'm going to show you guys how to clean uh, retro controllers. But it doesn't have to necessarily be retro controllers, it can be any controllers at all. You could, in theory, do this with something like your uh, Xbox One controller or your PlayStation 4 controller if you want. I don't really think that's necessary as of right now. But why I say retro controllers, because a lot of times you'll buy stuff like off eBay and whatnot, and they'll be really gunked up. Now, Adam Korlick um, does a, a phenomenal series called uh, Gamerade, where he goes and he shows you all these different things on how to clean and, and take care of your consoles. I do a few things a little bit differently. Uh, for controllers, it's pretty much going to be the exact same thing. But I figured, ah, oh, what the hell, I'll, I'll just show you guys uh, what I do for these. So before we begin, you are going to need a couple of things. I always recommend da -da, a toothbrush, not one you're using, hopefully, and a very small, very small Phillips uh, screwdriver. It's a very, very tiny one because you're going to be going in holes like, uh, like this. So, yeah. Uh, I don't think there are any proprietary screws on retro consoles for controllers. I could be wrong. I know for systems there are like Super NES and uh, N64, they have the security bit, which uh, if I ever decide to clean one, I'll, I'll show you that. But for right now, a Phillips screwdriver like this, a small one, will be good. But before you begin, always take a look inside these holes see what the condition is of the screws one that you have to really watch is the uh, original nes because those if no one has cleaned those and sweat has built up for years and years and years there is a very high chance that the uh, the screw head could be deteriorated so just by putting the phillips screwdriver in and turning once you'll just shatter the uh, head of the screw so uh, be mindful of that Okay, so now we've got our supplies. You're basically going to need this, you're going to need this, and we're going to head over to a sink where we are going to dismantle the controller, put everything uh, nice and neat, and then uh, we'll, we'll wash stuff. Woohoo! Okay, let's get started. Okay, since I don't have a tripod, this is going to be kind of interesting, but I think you guys can make out that is pretty damn disgusting, right? Uh, the rest of the controller... Surprisingly, like in here, it doesn't look too, too bad, but going back there, yowzer. All right, so I have a designated terry cloth here that I use for these sorts of things. So I'm going to wet this in my glorious sink over here, and I'm just going to go around this and basically just pull on this to clean all of the cord because believe it or not, it doesn't look it, um, but this, this gets really, really dirty. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. I'm just going to clean this cord. And um, then I'm going to go around, I'm going to turn this over. You see, you can definitely see it's really nasty. Uh, anyways, I'm going to get in there and I'm going to remove all the screws. All right, something I forgot to mention is if you want to clean in there, you, your best bet is to, um, I don't know how well this is going to come up, but there are actual pins in there. So uh your best bet might be to just shoot it with some compressed air this one is not too too bad uh here let's say hi to the kitty there's the kitty he wants to join in the fun okay now let's remove the screws and away we go okay so six screws have been removed just place them somewhere um, you can, you know, keep them together or whatnot. You can go ahead and clean these with a little bit of Windex if you want, but that's up to you. Uh, so that's it. Now this should just pull right off. And you see there's nothing really in here. It looks in good shape. Uh, the back is kind of nasty. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to go over to the sink here. And I'm going to put some uh, soap on that, and I'm going to use my lovely toothbrush, and I'm just going to get in there and get all that out. So let's see. This is the before. Let's make sure you guys can see that really good. See all the nastiness and crust, and then I'll show you the after right now. All right, here it is. Um, if you look really carefully, 
you'll see that it's all clean. It's just got water residue all over it. I put it on the stove here. And now I'm just going to let this air dry for the next uh, like 10, 20 minutes. You want to make sure that all these holes don't have, um, don't have any water in them anymore. And also you want to make sure you scrub here to get off any excess sweat or anything like that. But already you can tell it's way nicer than it was before. Okay, so coming back to this, what you want to do now is just remove this board itself, and that's really easily done. You simply lift this up like that, and then the board's just going to essentially plop out if I can just grab it with one hand, which might prove to be a little challenging. All right, and there's your board. Okay, now you can go ahead and clean these contacts with uh, a Q-tip or some um, and some Windex. I'm just going to put this aside right now. All right, uh, these can just be removed like that. They typically they fit on these little knobs you see here, stuff like those two. Uh, but I'll show you how to put it back together after. All right, and you see the way it's like really stuck on there. To be honest, it doesn't look too bad so i think i'm just going to give this a real quick once over my main concern is with all these buttons over here but let's go back to the board if i can get out of the light yeah it looks really good you could clean up some of these contacts with a q-tip and uh, just dab it with a little rubbing alcohol or windex which is an all-purpose glass cleaner and uh, you can just like i said you can just go over all these different contacts here if you want but this board actually looks really good which is surprising considering how bad the uh, d-pad was okay so anyways uh, like I said these they can just be washed with uh, soap and water is no big deal all of these things in here every single one of these are little switches and they can all come out they're all exactly the same there's no difference between them uh, the only one I think might be a little different is this little guy in here but even that, I mean, they're not bad, but the idea is you want to just simply do this. You want to take everything out. Now I'm going to wash this shell, okay? And then I'm going to go through each one of these buttons like this, yuck! And I'm going to use soap and water and the toothbrush, and I'm going to really clean that up. All right, so I've washed. This was the back plate that I washed. Look how nice that is, other than that little thingy. All right, um, and here's this. It cleaned up really nice. And remember that awful D-pad? Well, look at that. No longer awful. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this dry for a while. And then I'm going to just go ahead and place back the different buttons. But I just want to show you how that works right now, even with this wet, so you get an idea. You see the way these there's like little grooves there? You can't screw this up. Like buttons, for example, they all go in in only one direction. So you just match everything up. Uh, what I always do is I take a picture, for example, on a six button controller, because this one was unique. It actually said one, two, three, four, five, six, like that. So I'm gonna make sure I put the buttons back in the correct way. And like I said, I mean, there's only one way they really go. They have the different grooves, just match the buttons up. Um, and then with these turbo buttons here, there was like a little black piece that goes in first and then you put your individual switches. So I'm going to put all that back and then come back to show you how you finish this off. Okay, so I've put this back. Um, it, it's a little awkward to see, but you see underneath there, the top layer goes over the bottom layer. My little cat is wants my attention. Um, so you just have to watch stuff like that. Yeah, I just want to make sure that you get it in correctly. Uh, this one is really simple. There's a little plastic knob. You just put it on. Uh, there was all these black things inside here. This one goes over there and connects up there. Simple as that. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these turbo switches back in. They only go in one way. And then I'm going to put that back and uh close it up all right i've put the back on you'll see it all lines up perfectly 
Now I'm just going to close this up, put the screws back, and have one final look at this bad boy. Alright guys, so here we have a brand new, pretty much perfectly clean controller. And you remember all that junk? Well, it's all gone. So I hope uh, this video was educational, and we'll have one more quick glance at the cat because I know you guys love the cat here he is yes there he is alright guys so thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you in the next video